With our first masking set complete, it's time to build additional sets for our template, which will allow us to start layering different elements onto our home. If you completed part 3 of this series and built a basic display, you will want to reopen your original template, since we will be continuing to build off of that going forward. Let's pick up where we left off on the fusion page. Here we have our baby fusion tree with our first masking set to cover the whole house. Let's disable the masking set, and decide what additional sets we will want to create. Looking at this house mask, there are three distinct sections of the home. The garage on the left, the middle portion of the home, and the right hand side that forms a bit of a tower. Let's add new masking sets for each of them, by giving them their own fusion tree limbs. Just like in part 2 of this series on basic masking, we will add a new merge node to the trunk. Then, bring down a new background node onto the node's pane, but don't connect them just yet. Next bring down a new polygon node to create the mask, and remember to turn off key framing using the inspector. Once again, go around and create the mask by clicking on the outline of the map file at various points. This time, we will only focus on masking a smaller section of the house map. When creating masking sets, it's good to give any object that exists on its own plane a separate mask. For this, the garage door is on its own plane since it's offset from the garage siding, so you could strike directly through it if you wanted to. Let's connect everything together to create the tree limb for this layer. If you change your mind and want to make adjustments to the mask to cover the garage door, you can add additional points to the mask by selecting the polygon node, then click anywhere on the line of your mask. This will add a new point which you can drag and manipulate into place. For future reference, if you ever wanted to delete a point, simply select it and hit the delete key on your keyboard. Repeat this process for each of the remaining siding layers. If you desire, you can have each background node be a different color to help you differentiate each layer. You might notice that in this example, we are ignoring some of the larger pieces of trim on the home. This is because they will get their own layers further down the road. For now, we are just focused on layers that cover the siding only. For this slim section of the home, I could mask it on its own layer. However, in the three years I've been doing shows, I've only actually used a separate layer for that one time. The section just isn't big enough to do anything special with, and doesn't really cause an issue with my displays. So for now, I'm going to just include it as part of the same mask for the right side of the house. You will have to make this determination on your own, depending on the size of the area. If you want to be on the safe side, you could create the mask for it, and determine later if it's worth the effort. Since the garage door is one of the best places to put hero elements for a show, it pretty much deserves its own layer. We will create a limb for the garage door above our previous ones. And with that, our initial sets are complete. We now have a fully grown fusion tree for the siding layers of the house. Limbs that are higher up on the tree, are more visible than any of those below them. Said another way, we now have layering within the fusion page, similar to what you would find if you were using the edit page to build a show. We've also built in a series of on and off switches, which will disable any of the tree limbs, should we not need them for a show build. You might be wondering about additional details such as the windows or house trim. We will be addressing them in a future tutorial, where we will give those elements their own video tracks entirely. For now though, you just need to understand that if we try to do too much on one fusion tree, performance and eventually render times can suffer. So this is a good stopping point for this video. We have a lot more ground to cover in this series, so be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on future tutorials on working with Resolve to create a home projection show.